Hi everybody, Jo here. You know what that means, time for a crafty catch up. So either grab that brew, nice drink of water, maybe cheeky snack if you fancy one, and let's have some crafty play together. Today, I thought we'd create a design similar to this. And really, it's just a nice choice of some stamps, a stencil, and I'm just using one colour of ink. Today, I've gone for the Elements Ink Pad and I'm using Pine. So, I hope you're going to join me. Now, I'm going to start off with a piece of card and it's a multifarious card and it's seven inches by five. I know a lot of you like to know the sizes in inches. And what we're going to do is we're going to start off with some low tack tape and we're just going to tape off opposite corners. Recently, I've done quite a few cards where we've made a frame with our low tack tape. So I thought it would be nice to mix it up a bit. I'm always looking for ways of just altering design slightly. So I'm just going to go for opposite corners. It's just nice to try something a bit different. So I'm just going to put my tape on and again it's important to have low tack tape. Again Sweet Poppy stencils do a lovely one, I think this one sticks too. So as I say just opposite corners and I'm going to use my stencil brush and as I say my Elements ink pad. Now this is quite a challenge for me because green isn't a colour I would normally go for but it's nice to do a piece in a colour that you don't necessarily normally use. So I'm going to use my stencil brush. These ink pads are full of colour. They're highly pigmented, which is great for your gel press. I mean, it's great anyway, but one thing you are going to get a lot of colour. So I'm just going to take some of the ink off on my mat here, almost like my palette. And I'm going to start in the corner and I'm actually going to start on my masking tape and just bring a little bit of colour in. Now I will start on my corner because I want my corner deeper and I've got more ink on my brush when I start and then once I've got some on I'm just going to flick some along the edge here and almost lift it up so it's not too heavy at the ends. So again we'll just flick up that edge and it is almost a, a flick in motion because then it's lighter. We'll do the same in this corner again into the ink, off on my craft mat, start on my tape. Just get some on the corner and then just flick along there, turn your card round, flick up there. Now I've got a bit of an edge there so I'm just going to work on that and just flick, don't worry about it. We'll go across there, that'll just blend into the background nicely, don't worry at all. And I'm happy with that. So I'm going to put the lid on my ink going to leave that ink there because I'm going to reuse that in a minute but the next bit I want to get on with my stamping. So I've just got a magazine here and some copy paper. For me I just find it works well for me as a good base for my stamping and I'm going to start off with Pippin. Now I've got to be honest he's my favourite of my pound stamps. So much so I've actually got two of him. He has an understudy because those of you that have got a Pippin you will know he does like to wander. So it's always useful to have a spare. And I'm just going to pop him here. And again, he's a silhouette stamp, so you've got lots of ink there. So just give him a couple of seconds to let that ink soak into your, your card. If you're new to stamping, you're probably in quite a rush to lift the, the acrylic block up. But try and just hold your stamp down a little bit longer. You'll find you get a much better result. There we go, and he stamps beautifully. So next for my foliage, I've actually gone for, it's the sea flower. Now again, this is beautiful for when we do it with the fish, the fish set, our lovely jailer, all our mermaids, gorgeous. But I thought, I mean, I just like to use stamps in a different way. So I'm thinking, to me, it's just hanging foliage. And that's what we're going to do today. So again, if you've got limited number of stamps, if you're one of our new followers, just look at them in a different way. They have multi-uses. Now I'm using the black, the Versafine Claire. And I'm just going to come in. I want 
Pippin to be looking up at this. So that would go there. And for me, I stamp at the side. I just find it easier. And again, with this, always keep one hand on the stamp block. Now, because we've got a ledge here where we've got our tape, we just need to press a little bit firmer so that we can get the image. Now, also, these blocks are flexible, so you can flex the ends a little. And again, that will just help when you're pressing to get a nice crisp image. And that's the sort of thing you want, a lovely image like that. So much detail. So we'll just pop another couple of those on. Always nice to have odd numbers. So we're going to have three of these hanging. So we'll have another one here. I think we'll go for there. And again, don't be in a rush to lift your stamp up too soon. And we've got that edge here again. So just nice press. And I think I've no tape there. So I think I'm actually going to put another one here. Again, I never do two the same. I don't know about you. But again, that's the beauty of these designs. You can alter them. I mean, I've got choices here. I could put an extra piece of tape and an extra one there. Or do I put one here? I think we'll go for one here. Just a little popping in there. Yeah, I prefer him looking that way. And what I'm going to do now is just blot. Because we're using VersaFine Claire, it's a slower drying ink. So I'm just going to blot that ink. Just because I'm going to be adding the stenciling work now. And I don't want that ink to smudge. And if ever you've done that, you'll know what it's like. So you almost have to get in good practices. So that's blotted nicely. So next, I think we'll ground Pippin. And for that, we're going to use our acetate hill masks. And these are lovely. I think there's four in here. And I'm going to use, so we've got choices. We've got, look at those lovely mountainous, but I don't think we want a mountainous ridge today. I think we'll use this nice hilly one and this nice flatter one to ground him. So again, same ink pad. I'm going to go in with my elements. So for me, again, I find it easy just to turn my work round and I'm just thinking of placing, there we go. We'll just pop that there. And again, in my ink on my mat and always onto the acetate and then we're just going to flick flick some off and again I think I'll go quite a bit over here we're going to come out from where the masking tape is and extend it if I want to see how it looks I can lift that up yeah I'm happy with that I'm just going to give that a bit of a wipe before I put it away I'm afraid I always have to put my tools away nice and clean. So let's introduce a hill. We want a nice shape. I don't think that would look right, would it? So if we go for sort of a above pip in there, let's put the angle there. Now for this one, we want this one to be lighter than this because that helps with our perception. Things in the distance are always lighter. So I'm not going to add any more ink. In fact, I might take a little bit more off. So this will be lighter again on my mask first. And I just want to very gently brush a little. I just want the idea, the merest hint, lift it up. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So when I turn that round, can you see if I bring it a bit closer that that hill looks more in the distance because it's lighter. I mean, if I wanted, I could even pop another one up here, look. And again... Oh, that looks too, I don't want the same shape. Let me just, yeah, I think if we pop it there. And again, no more ink, just a nice gentle flick. And so it looks, I mean that, just such a lovely landscape. I mean, to be honest, you could leave it like that, couldn't you? 
I just want to wipe my mask and then put those away. Now, I just want a little bit more detail in here. I want to be able to still, I mean, again, as I say, you could leave this at this stage if you wanted, but I just want to introduce a little more with, and this is Glory, one of our gorgeous stencils. And again, you can choose, I tend to use individual stencil areas and I sort of move it round and think, what do I like? So I think I like that one there. I'm just going to pick my, pick my ink up off my mat. And again, nice light flicks. I'm happy with that. I fancy one just going that way. So if I have a look, oh, there's one that just off to the side. And again, I only want this very light. So let's just have a little look. Do you know what? That's enough. And I will say, when you're using your stencils, less is more. So often, do check, even if you think, you know, you haven't put much ink on, you'd be surprised. Now, I want one here, but I don't want to go over pipping. So I'm just going to come to the side again, lift it up. Oh, yeah, that's enough, look. Oh, and I like that dot there. I love the dots as well as the... Right, that's enough at the bottom. I'm going to turn it round, and I want some at the top. Now, I fancy a leaf coming off this way into this area. So let me have a look. Oh, we've got one there, look. Now that would be nice, although it's just coming out of from the foliage. Yep. Be mindful not to go off here because you'll get a line. And again, I haven't re-inked. You'd be amazed how much ink is left on your stencil brush. Now one the other way. Oh, there's one, look. We'll go for that one. And it's just nice picking these individual. And then just one down here. I don't want too much. Oh, that'd be a nice shape, look. And if we do that from the top, still not used any more ink, look. I'm using what's on my brush. I want a couple of those dots if I can, yeah. So when I turn that round, look, I've just got that nice shape. So we've got these almost growing up here and then hanging down there. So I like that. I'm going to put my lid on, and then I don't put my hand in it. And again, to clean my stencil, I'll just spritz it with water, put it on a piece of card, and that'll give me a lovely background. Now, I just want to add a little bit more detail here. And for this, I'm going to come in with this other pound stamp, the mini seed head. And this is, again, a fabulous one. If you haven't got this, I will just add it to your order whenever you put an, another order in. I'm going to stamp, if I show you the finished version, I don't know if you can actually see, we've got two colours here, we've got a green and a black, and I love to do this with foliage, again it helps with depth, with perception, the black brings itself to the foreground and the green just puts itself a little bit further back, so for this we're going to use Shady Lady. Sorry, it's actually called Shady Lane, but in my head I'm afraid it's always Shady Lady. I'm just going to ink up the seed head. And then we'll put a few of these. I've just got a little bit on my block. I'm just going to wipe that off. And let's have a few of these. Randomly. Round pipping. And again, I want them random. I don't want them all going in the same direction. I've got to be mindful. I think we'll have another one here. There we go. So I've got four in the green, so I'm thinking I could possibly, if I can put three in the black, I think that might look nice. So let's just see. And again, I have to remember not to put the ink pad on top of my finished work. I've done that before now and actually ended up with a mark. It's all these things that we do, isn't it? It's all about trying to get into good habits. Right, so let's have, we'll have one, I think there. Now, I'd quite like one coming off here. So if I do that one next, I'll extend it that way. And then I'm thinking one in here. Do I? What do I? There. I think that way. Yes, I like that. Oh, maybe just a second generation there. Yeah, there was a gap there. So second generation, I like that. And then... 
And what I'm going to just add is I love the little flicks of water. I've got this thing about flicking ink. Now, again, if you just want to leave it like this, you can. But this ink here, I'm just going to get, I've got my fan brush in a pot of water. That's where he lives. So I'm just going to use that ink and just add some little extra splats. Now, again, if you're not a fan of these, just leave them off. Just into those spaces. Not too many, don't want to overdo it. And then that nicely gives me, I can clean that up. Now, the next little bit, you could leave this and let it dry naturally. But I like to use my heat tool simply because two things. One, I'm going to dry those splats I've just put on the water. But also, it's a double. What you'll find is that the heat will loosen the glue on your double-sided tape, your low-tack tape. And look, it's starting to peel off. So it actually will make it easier to peel off. And just say, for example, you've got your wrong tape and it was one that was a bit too sticky, it will help it come off and it will come off so much easier. And another little tip, always dry from the back when you've dried from the front but also your ink will stay wetter on your low tack tape than it does on your card. It stays wetter longer. So just be mindful when you, the heat tool will just help to dry it a bit because again, you don't want to get ink on your fingers and then put a dirty mark on your card. And again, I think we've all done that at some point. We've all been there. So that tape comes off beautifully. And I have to say, I'm really pleased with that. I think it's such a pretty, pretty design. And it didn't take as long, did it? But if you want to add a little bit of colour, now again, you could go on full colour and colour these if you wanted. But I quite like, I love the fact I can see the detail. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use some of my um, chalk pastel pencils. And I'm going to do a couple of things. The first thing is I'm just going to ground Pippin and I'm just going to give him a bit of a shadow there. Now, because it's chalk pastel, I like to smudge it and that does two things. A, I think it looks better, but also it helps to set with it being the chalk pastel. And I'm just going to add a little bit of highlight on his tail. And for me, I just find this a little bit more forgiving than my gel pen. Sometimes with my Posca, I get a bit worried how it looks. I find this a little bit softer. And then what I'm going to do is come in with the green and I've got a cotton bud here. And this is a biodegradable cotton bud. So it's a kind one. And I'm just going to add a little bit look where it would be deeper. Just on a few of these. You don't have to do all of them. You can do all of them if you want. And again, I'll do it quite quickly. Obviously, you will spend longer. And then with my cotton bud, I'm going to do the same thing. Now, again, you could use your finger. I've got to be honest, when I'm at home, I use my finger. And what that does, it, same thing, it will just help set the chalk pastel pencil, but also it smudges it. And for me, it gives it, see, I nearly use my finger then. It just gives it a nicer look. And so you're not adding full colour, but you just, it's one of those things that to me just gives it a bit more depth and a bit more interest. So we'll just go in and smudge each one of these. If I miss one, you will tell me, won't you? If I missed one there. Now, you could add glitter to this if you want. I actually don't want to add any glitter. I just want to carry on as it is. Um, and I'm not going to add a sentiment because for me, I would wait and see what I was going to use this for. Now, the last little thing if you want is to add, um, you could add a black line all the way around if you want. I'm just going to add a little bit of doodling in my corners. And it's just a simple little bit of doodling look. But if you're worried about the harsh line here, put a few little dots. It'll soften the edge. And the same with this corner, just to, to do donate where the corner is, look. A bit of a squibble there and a bit of a squibble there. And a couple of dots. As I say, you can leave it without if you want. I'm just giving you lots of alternatives. So you can take it to whatever level you want. 
And so there we've got our two designs. So I really hope you enjoyed that. I'd love to see what you come up with. And our challenge this month is my favourite colour. So do you know what? For today, my favourite colour is pine, is the green of the elements. Don't worry, it will be back to orange tomorrow. So you take care, everybody. Thank you so much for joining in. I'll pop back next week for another catch-up. Love and hugs. Bye for now.